What's going on, YouTube? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I'm Ty. I'm Katie. We're to get up travel. And today, we're headed to Moldova. Let's go. Here we go. Moldova. People have been suggesting this to us, so yeah. thank you. I have no idea where Moldova is. No clue. Is it a large country? A small? I'm guessing a small country. I mean... Just because I've never heard of it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's yes. do it. First, so that, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> first Moldova video on the channel. If it's your yeah. first time coming across the channel, please give us a quick subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. Yes. We come out with videos Everybody's every so single day. Like we sure do. Episode. And... Stupid and I this the is starting. The YouTube space oh. oh gosh. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. All right. I I clicked to pause and you also hit spacebar to pause, oh. so it like paused and played. Stop and play at the same <laughs> All time. All right. Anyways, we okay. are ready. Let's yes. go. Here we go. Hey everybody. So once again, just like the last yeah, episode, wall. I was stupid and I booked the wrong day at the YouTube space, so this episode was filmed in my house. The audio quality is not going to be as good. The black backdrop is totally visible. But hey, we got some good information in this episode. Oh, and uh, you can get one of these shirts: "The Blood of Those Who Fight for the Freedom." Jackerfnow.com. Anyway, enjoy the episode. Imagine a person who speaks Russian is orthodox, eats borscht, and lives in a state that is slowly trying to introduce market enterprise in a partial state-run system. Chances are, you're Russian, right? Nope. Latin. At least in Moldova. Hmm. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. If you don't include microstates, Moldova is the European country with the least amount of visitors. And even then, Monaco, a microstate, gets like three times more visitors. This episode is going to be Damn. very fun because if you know me, I love diving into the obscure, underrepresented regions of the planet that need publicity boosts. So be honored yeah, I've because never today heard of them. you're about yeah. to enter the Bob Saget of Europe. Dun, dun, dun. Most people in the world probably won't be able to tell you where Moldova is on the map. If you can, congratulations, you're probably Moldovan. First of all, the country is landlocked, located in Eastern Europe, bordered by Romania to the west and Ukraine to the north, east, and south. Yes, Ukraine even took this one mile wide corridor on the lower Dniester National oh, wow. Park, cutting off the closest access they could have had to the Black Sea. The country is divided into 32 districts with the capital and largest city, Chisinau, located in the south center of the country. In addition, they have three municipality cities, Chisinau itself being one, along with Balti and Bender, as well as two strange autonomous territorial units, Gagauzia and Transnistria. We'll talk more about these later. Mm. The country has only one main international airport, Kishinya International. Otherwise, in smaller, the whole country? Wow. partially certified airports can be found in places like Balti and Markulesht. Now, after Kishinya, if you consider Transnistria part of Moldova, then the city of Tiraspol, their capital, would be the second largest one. Otherwise, Balti would be next. And speaking of which, let's just get it over with. What exactly are those two strange autonomous guys, Transnistria and Gagauzia? Gauzia. Well, in the simplest way I can put it, both of these places are a little more Russian influenced from the rest of Moldova, as if Moldova wasn't already Russian influenced enough to begin with, but we'll talk about that later. Gagauzia is kind of like a more truly autonomous state in the fact that the people are culturally distinct with a Turkic Orthodox Christian background. They speak their own language, Gagauz. It's split into four separate enclaves made up of these localities that have over 50% Gagauz populations, including this small two mile wide plot of farmland next to Karbalia. Even though they politically disagree with Moldova, as in they've threatened that if Moldova tries to join the EU, they would opt out for independence and side with Russia. Regardless, they are actually pretty chill. You can visit and easily take pictures, see if you can get to one of those Welcome to Gagauzia signs on the road. Transnistria, on the other hand, is a little more tricky. They actually have declared independence in 1992, no, which really? is like a military conflict in Wait, the 90s. So after that area has independence from Moldova? Yeah, I guess so. So they don't claim themselves as part of the country, even though they're in the country? I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> the ceasefire was established. They set up rules, but today it lies in a frozen conflict zone status. Today hmm. they have their own government, military, police, wow. postal system, currency, vehicle registration. You even have to show your passport before crossing oh the border. Wow. And with about a third of the population being Russian, it's no surprise that they side with Russia and have Russian peacekeepers to maintain the border security. Yeah, I know. Insert your opinion in the comments below. You can find lots of Soviet-style symbols in their streets. In fact, they're the only state in the world that still uses the former USSR hammer and sickle in their 
their flag. Whoa, we started that and even we don't have that anymore. Yeah, I'm just such a fan of your early work, you know? Some notable spots of interest might include places like the Stephen the Great statue. He's like the Whoa. hero of the nation. The sites of Old Orge, the Ooh, Fortress that of Soroka, like yeah. Manukeli's Castle, yeah, the Ark of Triumph and Cathedral of Moldova. So many monasteries like these. Wow. The National Museum of History of Moldova. The National Museum of Ethnography. The State Circus in Kishinyan. Oh, the wow. Prince statue. The Jewish Whoa. Cemetery. Gypsy Hill. And probably the most iconic landmark, the underground wine city of Mylesti Michi. The underground World wine Record, city? Largest Whoa. wine collection in the world with over 120 kilometers of tunnels and corridors. Wow. They love wine. Let's talk more about resources and such <laughs> in... That was sweet looking. Yeah. Dang, now, you must have a lot of grapes. About Moldova's land, one thing you definitely should know <laughs> to is make all that wine. wine. Most houses in the countryside and even some of the cities have wine cellars. It's kind of like what saunas are wow. to Finland. Ah. Great analogy. Yeah, I, I get it. First of all, Moldova's land is mostly situated between the two longest rivers of the country, the Prut, which makes up the entire western border with Romania, and the Dniester with Ukraine. But then with Transnistria, a series of arbitrary lines through flat farm fields goes past the river, hence where the name Transnistria comes from, across the Dniester. The country is made up of small, short, forested hills cut by numerous creeks and rivers, the tallest point being only 430 meters high, Balinesht Hill, and all of which are part of the Moldovan Plateau, which extends into the larger Carpathian Mountains chain. The largest natural lakes would be either the Manta and the Beliu, located right on the border with Romania. And right at the very southernmost tip of Moldova, they have a small 200 meter coast with the Danube and their only shipping port with access at Girjulesht, which is essentially the only indirect point of access they have to the Black Sea, which is kind of important. Whew! Alright, animation is done, so you know what that means. This is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Noah takes over as co-host in this segment, so I don't end up losing my voice before this episode is over. Uh, brother man, I think you have a problem. Don't care, take it away. <laughs> But half of the country is arable, and chances are no matter where you travel, you will find a vineyard. As mentioned before, Moldova yeah, takes wine wow. very seriously. And for a nation as small as they are on the world stage, it's amazing oh they make wealth in wine production. They even have a holiday to celebrate it. Their lush landscape <laughs> is home to various animal species like brown bears, European hares, minxes, great egrets, white storks, and the national animal, the oryx. You can even find it on their coat of arms. Oh. Just north of the capital, you can find one of the largest gypsum caves in the world, the Emil Rakovita, containing over 20 underground lakes. Food-wise, they pretty much follow the same format as Romania. You have things like mamaliga, sarmale, and placinte. You'll notice everything kind of has a Slavic twist to it. Lots of sour cream added to soups. Borscht, a sour tasting soup, is popular, as well as pickled vegetables. Economy-wise, things really changed up after independence from the Soviet Union. Trade policy changed, and for a while, they had a huge inflation rate after switching currencies. Today, they are classified as the poorest country in Europe in terms of GDP per capita, and to address this, they had to switch up a few things. One thing they did was they greatly loosened the foreign investment barriers to pretty much anything, as long as it didn't go against the interests of national security and order. Also, purchasing agriculture and forested lands are forbidden. Even so, not much change, and it's partially because, mm, well, it kind of went like this. All right, independence, ready to take on the world. Sweet, so what are you going to do now? Are you going to open up a market economy? Yes, technically. I mean, you know, I'm still going to, like, kind of heavily re regulate wages and prices and add a few legal restrictions, but yes, privatization and whatnot. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, when are you going to announce this globally? And we'll get to that later. First, I need some wine. Yep, Moldova kind of lacks in the PR <laughs> department for now. Otherwise, there is a slow but steady overall growth, but it's always kind of hindered by domestic problems. Seems like a great time to discuss more of that in... Demographic. Right. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Now, it really does kind of seem like in order to understand Moldova, you kind of have to understand Romania first because it's so important. But you alas, the videos yeah. are done alphabetically, so sorry. Ugh, I should have named myself Lomania. Someone said Lomi. Getting off topic. Anyway, <laughs> including the disputed autonomous regions of Gagauzia and Transnistria, Moldova has about 3.3 million people and has seen a decline since the peak at 3.7 in 1992. The country is made up of about three quarters that identify as Moldovan and 7% Romanian, but in all honesty, they're pretty much the same people. After that, there is a noticeable Ukrainian minority at about 6.6%, Gagals at about 46 and the rest are mostly Russians, Bulgarians, Romani, and other groups. They use the Moldovian Leu as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, what exactly is a Moldovian? Well, in the shortest, simplest way I can put it, unless you talk to one of the incredibly nationalistic ones that will start a debate, they're basically Romanians. They speak pretty much the exact same language, except the Moldovian might use some yeah. Russian slang words here and there, but essentially, they're pretty much just speaking the same thing. For those who don't know, the Romanian language is actually a Latin-based Romance language related to French, Italian, and Spanish. It is the easternmost Romance language in Europe. I've heard stories from Latin Americans and Romanians meeting each other, and they're kind of like, Hmm, 
I kind of understand a bit of what you're saying. Where they differ though would be politics and history. This is kind of what separated them. Very similar to what happened to the Koreas. Remember those episodes? My mom was in one of them. Essentially, even though they were part of the Warsaw oh, yeah, Pact, Romania <laughs> never became a Soviet Republic, whereas Moldova did. And then they kind of became somewhat Russified. Eventually, Romania leaned more towards capitalistic interests and eventually joined the EU. Moldova never did. So basically what you have are two siblings that were brought up in different schools and taught very different lessons from two drastically different faculties. Today, most Moldovans are bilingual with Russian, and you can still see hints of the Soviet past and influence, but like it's 50 times stronger in Transnistria. They are like turbo Russia fans. One way you can see the influence, for example, would be the fact that over 90% of the nation, to varying degrees of devotion, identify as being part of the Orthodox Church. Nonetheless, they've still held on pretty well to their roots. They have a plethora of traditional Moldovan folk arts and music, ancient ballads like these. They have a holiday in July where everyone just kind of puts on a culture show. Moldovan ceramics hmm. and weaving culture has always been a trademark of the country's identity. Keep in mind, they also have a noticeable gypsy or Roma community, especially in the town of Soroka. They even have a king oh, of gypsies, wow. this guy. He acts more of like a communal facilitator rather than an <laughs> actual ruler. It's interesting though, because no matter how hard the Slavic culture has tried to permeate through their populace, they just could not let go of their passionate Latin roots. Moldovans have always kind of had like a little bit of a humorous side. They don't mope around and let life or struggle get to them. They love it when anybody notices them and when they do, they don't hesitate to put on a show, especially when it comes to Eurovision. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. Wow. They celebrate harvest festivals, a car-free day, a huge music car festival free in March. Day. That's pretty anyway, cool. we go on and on, but we gotta discuss the history in the quickest way I can put it. The Trapilia culture, the Drakians, the Romans, Bulgars, Hungarians, and other tribes invade. The Mongols came by, Turks come in, Stefan the Great, the hero of the nation, wins 44 battles. They end up becoming an Ottoman vassal state. Russia comes in and annexed what they called Bessarabia. After World War One, Romania came in, they unified. After World War II, the Soviet Union came came back in, they become a Soviet Republic, Moldova becomes very Russianized until 1991 independence, the Dniester War with Transnistria, scandals, protests, they can't figure out who they want as a president for like three years, and here we are today. Now I asked some of you guys, the Moldovan geography peeps, to give me a list of some of the most famous Moldovan people in your opinion, and here's some that you mentioned. Ozone, the guy who made that Numa Numa song, the oh. epic sax guy, Ayan and Doina, Maria Bisu, Eugen Doga, Alexandru Plama Dayala, Maria Sebotari, Gregor Veru, Nikolai Skislov, Alexander Frumkin, Anton Rubinstein, Samuel Zemurai, and Horst Kohler. I, they said he kind of counts. All right, cool people and even cooler ties to the rest of the world, which brings us to... Renzo. Right? Yep. Yeah, as Europe's most obscure nation, Moldova has always kind of wanted to break out and show the world what they're made of. First of all, they get along with many of the other former Soviet states, especially the Caucasus ones like Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. Although business isn't that strong between them, they still love to share stories whenever they visit each other. Ukraine is probably the closest one though, as they are a major trade and import partner. Many Ukrainians live in Moldova, and they've been key players in their history. Now since independence, Moldova has always kind of been in between a tug of war match between Russia and the EU. Recently, Moldova has expressed a great desire to join the EU, and follow the footsteps of their brothers, Romania. And preference has been waning towards their former empire rulers, except in Transnistria and Gagauzia. And whenever Moldova becomes a little too European, Russia tugs harder at these two areas, which kind of keeps Moldova in a slight limbo state diplomatically. In terms of their best friends though, almost every single Moldovan I talked to has said the same country, Romania. It's not even a friendship, it's literally a family. These two countries understand each other better than anyone else. And despite the small differences, they are one blood. Many people have family in each country, they share the same language, stories, food, and weird Eastern Latino culture. Yeah, really In similar. conclusion, yeah. Moldova is like a heavily Slavic-influenced, Orthodox Latino nation with two strange breakaway children, but when it gets a little too much for them to handle, they just sit down and sip the wine. Stay tuned. <laughs> Monaco is coming up next. Nice. Yeah, I didn't even know anything about that. No, me neither. Not at all. I didn't even know it was near Romania, let alone they have like <clears throat> a very similar flag. Yeah, a very similar. Yeah. Huh. Wow, that was crazy. That, that... card day was really interesting. Yeah, that wine. Oh my gosh. It was oh like a gosh, wine city underground. Yeah. I want to find that. Yeah. Great. Right they had here, a car driving through it. Yeah. <clears throat> it was like an underground tunnel. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. It's like, is that a road? Or... Yeah. What is that? Wow. It's unbelievable. That Look is at unbelievable. That. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going. That is sweet. Wow. That's really cool. So is that where they store all the wine to put into the stores or something? I don't know. I want to know more like, about this. Like, do people this. just come down here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and just take the wine? Do you just, what? like, 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is this connected to a restaurant or something? Iconic landmark, the underground wine city of Malesti Michi, the Guinness World Record largest Look at that. wine. Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to know more about that. Me too. It's like interesting. Yeah, really cool. Very interesting. Wow. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Moldova. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below what we need to check out next. Let us know more about Moldova. Yeah. What do we need to know? Yeah, let us know. And thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you so much. And if it's your first time coming across our channel and checking out one of our videos, please give us a quick subscribe. Hit that notification bell to stay up to date because we come out with videos every, every single, single day. day. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See ya.